Hey guys, we're back with another video today and today we're going to be rolling the fenders on my 99 Integra. We're going to be using the Eastwood fender roller which I have right there borrowed from a friend. And um, we are going to be starting with the front driver side. First thing you want to do is jack up your car and I highly recommend using jack stands. In our case, we are not going to use them. Please pay no attention to that. It's highly recommended to use jack stands. And the lug nuts on this are 19 millimeter, the factory spec. It's the ones that I have on it right now. So we're gonna jack up the car and show you what to do from there. Okay, now that we have the car jacked up in the air, remember, use jack stands, and we have the wheel off of the car. Just wanna show you guys something. This is the fender liner that goes underneath the fender and protects all the dirt and grime from underneath the road and entering the engine bay or your fender which goes into your door. Um, most of the time when you do roll fenders, the tabs which connect the fender liner to the actual fender themselves get pushed in so you won't be able to retain it although there are ways to get them still to attach using zip ties and other uh, methods in our case we are going to take it off first by removing these Phillip head screws and these clips right here so these are basically just pop outs there is a special tool but you can also use a flat head to pry it and then pull off the whole assembly uh, we're going to take that off right now and show you guys what is under this. Oh, and also just to let you know, this fender already had previous damage. That is why um, the paint is a little bit lifted right here, and there are uh, some wear marks on the side of it. Uh, just to let you know, we are not going to expect a perfect result on this one due to the fact that the paint is already damaged, like I, I said before. Uh, but normally, we would use the heat gun, which we're still going to show you how to use anyway, to basically be able to mold the paint into the new position when you pull the fender or you roll it. So we're gonna take that fender liner off now and show you the bottom. Alrighty, now that we have the fender liner off, I just wanna let you know, I failed to mention, it also extends towards the front and you will have another clip right here and a bolt goes right there and I believe one more screw on the bottom. Okay, so here's the view with the fender liner off and basically this lip has already been touching on my wheel before so it's not as flared out as it is. You'll see on the passenger side, if I can get a quick video of that, it is more flared out. This is normally bent out like that in the stock position. Uh, with the roller, what it normally does, it'll roll this up so it's almost uh, like a sandwich location like this, uh, pinched together. And with the roller, you can also flare out the fender so it'll push it out a little bit and allow more clearance for your wheels. Uh, one of the methods that I was saying before to keep the fender liner would be once this is tucked up, slip a zip tie through it and then the zip tie to the connector, well where they connect right here in one of those holes and I know that people have done that in the past to do it for all of the connectors and mount it in that fashion. Uh, my personal cars, I've never kept fender liners but like I was saying before, you do end up with a lot more dirt in the engine bay and more dirt right here. You can see this is going into the door panel. Once you open, that'll be exposed. And then right here is just uh, leaf and dirt buildup which is found from regular road debris. So we're gonna put the fender roller on which normally just bolts straight onto the um, rotor itself. Thank you. So you see the different bolt patterns that it offers and we're going to put this on here and show you how to adjust it. Okay, now we have the Eastwood roller on and as you can see there are different lug patterns that you can adapt this whole assembly onto. On this one it's a 4x100 like most Hondas and Integras and you don't want these lug nuts the, to spec which is I think 85 for most Integras or Hondas. Uh, you just want them snug so there's no play at all and you don't want it coming off, of course, when you're rolling, you want to keep an even pattern. Uh, another thing to mention, at the moment, this Integra is automatic, so we're going to want to put it into neutral. That way, the rotor assembly and hub assembly is able to spin freely back and forth, because that's what we're going to rely on right now to actually roll the fender. Although this rolls freely, the whole assembly is going to sway back and forth, which causes the flare out or the roll of the fender itself. So we're going to put it in neutral and show you how it works. All right, so we have it in neutral now, and as you can see, the whole assembly is able to move freely. Another thing to note is that always make sure you have your emergency brake on, since in this case, you don't have the car in gear, in first gear, or in this case, in parking, the car can sway back and forth. We always put our e-brake on. Uh, just to show you the adjustments, uh, this knob right here, you loosen it, and you're able to go up and down. And we're going to set it to about right there for the first initial roll. 
And then this bottom, bottom adjustment basically shows how much this whole unit is going to come towards you. So, and it rocks onto these pins back here. You uh, take out the, the pin and you can, you have two, a high and a low setting depending on what kind of car. Uh, so we are going to bring it out, not much. And then as soon as it starts having some contact, you start rolling back and forth slowly, but enough with enough pressure to pull out a little bit. There's almost, there's little to no pressure right now, but the metal is flexing since the metal that we use on these cars is very flexible. Uh, but first of all, we're going to start heating up with our heat gun. And you don't want it to stay on the same spot too long because it can burn up the paint. But you want to get the whole area heated up from the outside and the inside. Okay, now we have the fender heated up on the outside and on the inside. And it should be hot to touch. Not enough to burn you, but enough for you to notice a different in uh, different difference in the heat. Sorry. And we're going to start off by going, oh, like I was saying, the previous body damage is going to play some effect in this, and uh, that shouldn't be how it is, you know. Since we have a little bit of tension right now, it's just rolling, and you can see the lip is starting to go back in. And that's just due to the fact that there was a dent right here previously, and that this was pushed inwards from a, a previous accident. But basically, just roll. And sorry, my flash just went out. Once you start rolling, the lip will start to decrease and you just keep on adjusting, pull it a little bit out more each time. Continue to roll until you have the pull that you have desired and you'll see that all of the lip has gone away. Let me try to get my flash back and I'll show you a, a more detailed video. Okay, so now we've done a couple passes of rolling. Let me come on this angle so you can see. And you can see the flare and it's a little bit inconsistent on this side because we have the dents. I'm going to go over that with a uh, body shop hammer. Be able to hit out all the nicks and everything. Just to show you, can you give me the flash over here? Thank you. Uh, there's the roll. Remember how this used to be flared out? That's how it was before. That's how it is now. Nice and sandwich style. Um, the main concern when you're rolling fenders is this top portion right here, because that's normally where your, your wheel will bounce up and, and hit the tabs. The sides aren't as important, but if you want to be co consistent and for cosmetic reasons, you're more than welcome to do it. But uh, in this case, I just want to show you how to do the top part. Um, another adjustment on this that I failed to tell you before is this top knob, which you loosen, and this whole top arm with the, the red roller just moves in different locations. That way you can do more of a, a flare angle or more of a roll angle. In this case, we were just doing a roll, so we pushed in the, the stock tabs. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do the rest of the car and I'll see if I can get the passenger side video or at least a few pictures to show you how it'll look like without having previous body damage like we did on this side. We have it rolled to our desire and there's different steps that you can do it. Um, just to show you, I put the fender liner back on, and since it has been pulled and rolled, it doesn't line up 100%, and I haven't passed any zip ties to hold it up. So what we're gonna do, we just put the mounting clips and bolts on the bottom and on the sides. Same for this, for the mub flap and the bottom of the liner. And we're gonna go ahead and cut right here, and right here, that way it still does the, do some of its purpose uh, for the front to cover the engine and for the side to cover the doors. Although it's not 100% functioning how it should, it's better than nothing since we don't want this ugly flap just hanging down how it is. So we're gonna cut that off real quick and show you. All right, now that we've cut the fender liner, you can see right here, we've cut it with razor blade right here as well. The top portion is free of that uh, hanging bit that we had. Um, we're pretty much done with our Final result, as for this fender in particular, the other ones will come out smoother. Like I was saying, the damage does affect that, and I'll be able to touch that over in the next couple days with different tools. But um, a lot of people who do end up rolling fenders uh, have to look into other things that they also may be rubbing, like on a stock location. Right here, some people sometimes rub, I know the previous owner did, and some people like to cut this out with a die grinder or different tools. Uh, it's just different wheels that you have, different offsets uh, will affect different parts 
of your front end as well as your rear end. So that's pretty much it for this one. I'm going to see if I can get a few shots of the other side just so you show you the result without previous fender damage. All right, so here's the final resort result for the passenger side. I didn't flare it out as much, but it is a lot more consistent than the other side. I still have a little bit of a dimple right here. I will fix that in the next couple days, but it's a lot more consistent than the other side. Now for the rear, if you look at this, it has this little lip. You're going to want to take that off first. It's just kind of like a, yeah, I guess that's all you can call it, a little lip. And you're going to do the same process, although the metal that's used in the back right here is a lot thicker than the front. Not Well, not by a lot, but a reasonable amount that you'll have to heat it up a bit more and go in stages. Uh, on previous vehicles that I've done, uh, sometimes I've noticed that right here it'll get a little bit more difficult. So I've knocked it in with a hammer just ever so slightly just to get the roller started. So I'm going to do the rears right now and show you the after. Here's the, the lip from before. And I'll show you the after in just a moment. Okay, so after going through a couple steps of rolling, you can see right here, it's basically sandwiched. Just like we were trying to get it. There's no more ugly lip on there. Well, there is, but it's all rolled up there. And it's been flared out just a tad. And yes, we were doing every about 30 seconds, hitting it with the heat gun for about 20, and then continue rolling. Um, once you roll for, for a couple seconds, you tighten, tighten to the left, applies more tension, do it again, keep on going in small increments. Uh, the smaller the increments, the more you go back and forth, you'll have more consistency. And just if you do it all from once, you'll have uneven ripples like we did on the first fender that we did. Well, that's pretty much it for the rear ones. Just make sure you take off that lip first and you um, apply a good amount of heat on these. Alrighty, there's the fourth wheel well. And this isn't technically a fender pull, it's a quarter panel roll slash pull. So final result. This one came out very smooth. Gave it a lot of heat. Let's just go over, this is the fender that had the damage. This was a known good fender. Now we come to this one. Just so you know guys, I will be lowering this car quite a bit. Uh, the main reason that I'm rolling and slightly pulling the fenders. Because it will be dropped a couple inches. And... In the next couple of videos, I should be showing you the install I'm doing. Uh, lowering springs with, I think it's teen shocks I'm getting off of a friend for the front. And then coilover sleeves, just the sleeves, I believe they're ground control with an OEM shock uh, for the rear. It's just a really good deal that I'm getting off of a friend. So I'm going to roll with those for a while. And on uh, my other Integra, I should be getting a different suspension though. But that pretty much sums it up for today's video. Uh, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know what you think. And let me know if you want to see any videos or have any questions in specific. And I'll see if I can do my best to respond. Thanks, guys.